about that Manetti case again? Is that what's the trouble? Well, try not to think about it so much. I hate to see you get all tired and worried like this. Darling, take your coat off so you can sit down comfortably and relax. We certainly don't have to go to dinner tonight if you don't want to. I'll call Molly and let her know that you're much too tired. Would you like me to do that? She'll understand, I know she will. And we'll have a nice supper right here at home. There's plenty of meat in the freezer. It'll just take a little longer to cook, that's all. While it's in the oven, I'll sneak out to the corner and I'll get some vegetables. Oh, before I forget, I must tell you, old Miss Keating did the ring test to me. You know where they take a ring and they put a bit of string on it and they dangle it over the tummy? Guess what? It's a boy. Absolutely no doubt about it, she says, and she's never been wrong. Isn't that exciting? Where are you going? To the kitchen to get the meat out of the freezer. Sit down, sit down a minute. Patrick, what is all this? What's wrong, darling? Please tell me. This is gonna come as a bit of a shock to you. I hope you won't blame me too much. I would never blame you, darling. You know that. The truth is, Mary, I want to leave you. You understand me? I want to leave you. You don't mean that. Yes, I do mean it. And what's more, I want a divorce. There's someone else I want to marry. That's all there is to it. I love her and she loves me. Now, we gotta be sensible about it all. Calm and sensible. I'll arrange for the divorce. Naturally, you can have the baby when it comes. You'll have some money. It won't be much. But you'll get along just fine. I'll get you your supper. Get what? Oh, yes, yes. You must have your supper. I wouldn't ever let you go without your supper. And once you have something to eat, you will feel much better. What are you doing? I'm leaving. Patrick, you can't go. 
You can't. You can't. No. Patrick, I won't let you. I won't. I won't. I won't. No sense getting hysterical about it all. Patrick, I mean it. Try and stop me. Hello, Molly. Listen, darling, Patrick's just come in and he's utterly exhausted. Poor thing. He's had a terribly rough day. So I was wondering, would you mind terribly if we didn't come over tonight? <laughs> I knew you wouldn't. You're an angel, Molly. No, no, it's nothing like that. He's just working too hard, that's all. Well, maybe we'll see you over the weekend. Yes, that would be lovely. Okay, okay, goodbye, dear. Bye.
911, what's your emergency? Hello, operator? Uh, operator, quick, quick, give me the police quickly. <sighs> You gotta help us, Mrs. Maloney. You think you can pull yourself together now and talk to me a little? Yes. I'll do my best. I'll try. Now, tell me, is this exactly what the room looked like when you walked in? Yes. You haven't touched the thing. Well, all except Patrick. I came through the front door and I saw him laying there like that. You did what when you saw him? Try talking to him. I see. And then I saw that he was dead and I ran to the phone. I see. Now, what time was it when you went out? Can you tell me that? It was like 20 minutes ago. Okay. It's 6.14 now. You think it was about 5 to 6? Yes, I think so. Excuse me. Print man and photographer are coming in now. Oh, I want to see them. And we got a man out front and one in the back. Good. Now listen, folks, let's have a real thorough job here. Take all the time you need. This is Chief! Mike, tell them what we want. And they get the pictures right away before the doc comes in and starts shoving things around, okay? Now get going. Mrs. Maloney, you usually go out shopping so late. I'm tired, hon. Excuse me, I've got to ask you these questions. Oh. I understand. Why don't we stay home tonight? Well, no. I don't. As a matter of fact, Patrick and I were going out to dinner tonight with some friends. But he just seemed so terribly tired that I just called up and canceled. Now, who did you call? I'll call Molly and I'll let her know that we just can't make it then. Molly. Molly Vandermond. They live on South Street. Now, when your husband came in, did it seem to you that he may have had something on his mind? Do you think he was worried about anything? No. No, not especially. Okay. He just seemed terribly tired. Okay. So when he first came in... He... Excuse me. Who did it? No idea. See what you can find out, will you, Doc? Is that his wife? Yes. Better take her in the next room. Okay. Uh, let's go into another room for a bit, shall we? We'll be more comfortable there, and we'll be able to talk easier, too. I don't want to. I want to stay here. Please, let me stay here. I'll be all right. You got something cooking in the kitchen over here? Yes, yes, yes. That, that was a supper. I thought you didn't have any supper in the house. Wasn't that why you went out? Yes, but I have to go get vegetables. I have plenty of meat. I always have plenty of meat. Well, Doc? It looks like a severely fractured base to me. Just one blow. Right on the back of the head. With what? Can you make a guess? I can to a point, yes. It's bound to be something heavy, that's obvious. But it isn't sharp. At least I don't see any sharp edges on it. No, wh why do you say that? Well, look for yourself. <clears throat> the skin on the scalp isn't even broken. It isn't a hammer, for instance. More like a large club of some sort. Club? Yeah, something shaped like a club anyway. Smooth and rounded at the end. That's my guess.
I'm sorry, Mr. Maloney. We need to take the chief out now. See you later, Doc. Let me know as soon as you're through at the lab. I got it. Is this glass dusted? Yeah. Mrs. Maloney, you said you didn't notice anything particularly unusual about your husband's behavior when he came in this evening. No, not particularly. He just seemed very tired. I see he had a drink. Yes, he always has a drink when he comes home from work. And he usually took uh, soda, didn't he? Yes, I guess so. <laughs> and, and ice, of course. Mm-hmm. This evening he took it straight and with his coat on, right? I suppose he did. Now think hard, Mrs. Moni, please. He comes in the door. So what's the next thing he does after that? He kissed me. Now wait, and excuse me for asking you these questions, but I'm simply trying to figure out whether or not there was something on your husband's mind when he came in. You're quite sure he kissed you. It wasn't that you kissed him? He kissed me. Okay, and then he walks straight over there and pours himself a shot of neat whiskey. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I'm tired, hon. Why don't we stay home tonight? Well, uh, I mean... He doesn't usually have a drink before he takes his coat off, does he? No, I guess not. You saw all this, and still you didn't think he was a worried man? I told you. I just thought he was very tired. You know what I think, Mrs. Maloney? I think he was desperately worried. And if we could only find out why this was, then perhaps we would get somewhere. Well, I wish I could help you more. You know, the next thing I need to find is that weapon. Uh, Mike! Now look, I want you to go outside right away and comb every inch of the garden. Have those fellows out there help you. See what you can find and get some flashlights. I'll check the rest of the house. Right. This is Maloney. You know, somehow I don't believe that this was a premeditated murder, nor was it a professional job. I think it was a quarrel. And then, somebody lost their temper. And then, well, that person, whoever it was, simply reached for some object that was close at hand and swung it at your husband. The point is this. If I'm right, then the weapon that they use is probably somewhere in this house. Now, here's how you might be able to help us out. First of all, can you tell me if there's anything missing from this room that could have been used as a weapon? And please, take your time. Well, I don't know what sort of thing you mean. Well, something like a, a club, for instance. A club? You mean like a baseball bat? <sighs> yes, exactly. No baseball bat in this house. Then how about a, a door stopper or, or a heavy metal base or whatever you like? You understand what I mean, don't you? Yes. It's just, well, it's hard to remember everything that's in this house. Then perhaps you wouldn't mind coming along with me while I go over the rooms uh, one by one. Mrs. Maloney? Yes? You're quite sure you don't want someone to take you over to Mrs. Vandenort's house tonight? Oh no. I, I couldn't go anywhere tonight. Well, then you ought to go to bed and lay down. Either Mike or I will be around all night, so you don't have to worry. That would be fine. I might do that.
something fishy about this case. Go on. I don't believe there ever was a fight in this room. I think somebody purposely fixed it up afterwards to make it look as though there had been one. You do? I'll tell you why. It isn't humanly possible to club a man hard in the back of the head, right about here, in the middle of the fight. Well, not unless there were two people. Well, that's right, but I don't think there were two people. Or unless he got knocked out during the fight and the other fellow hit him while he was lying on the floor. Well, nobody knocked him out first. There wasn't a bruise or scratch on his entire body, except where he was hit. Hmm. The other thing is, he was carrying a weapon, wasn't he? Sure was. Then why didn't he draw it? You know why? Hmm. He didn't even realize he was being threatened. Hmm, well, in that case, the killer was probably somebody he knew pretty well. Exactly. You think it could have been a woman? Why do you say that? Well, you and I both know our friend here used to fool around a bit now and again. Yeah, I know what you mean. But the other thing is we still have to find that weapon. Hey, didn't anyone think to turn off that oven? Well, whatever it is, it sure as heck will be room by now. Hey, that looks all right. It sure does. Well, that's mighty peculiar, isn't it? I, I would have thought it'd be burned too crisp by now. Yeah, me too. Well, maybe it takes longer according how big it is. Well, this is a big one, all right. <laughs> You're darn right it's big. Jack, would you turn that off for me, please? It's okay, it's not spoiled. Well, yeah, I can see that. Actually, the reason why I came in here was because I wanted to offer you a cup of coffee. You must be terribly tired by now, the both of you. I'm so sorry I didn't think of it sooner. Well, that isn't necessary, ma'am. You know, you mustn't bother about us. Oh, no, no. Patrick would be absolutely upset if I didn't look after you properly. He used to tell me how grateful he was back in the day when somebody would offer him a cup of coffee when he couldn't make it home in time for a meal. He said it was the least you can do for somebody who's trying to help. Well, it certainly is good of you. It sure is. I'll tell you what. Why don't you help yourself to some of this, too? Oh, no, we couldn't do that, Mrs. Maloney. I wouldn't dream of it. We'll be sending out for some sandwiches in a little bit. Oh, no, no. Please have this instead. I'll just have to throw it out if you don't. But what about you, ma'am? Oh, no. Oh, no. I couldn't. I couldn't have any. Believe me. Um, give some to the others, too, particularly that fella outside standing out there in the cold. He must be absolutely famished by this time. Bring him in, why don't you, and uh, give them a nice hot meal. It's really good meat, I promise you that. Hey, guys! Boy, this is great. Best piece of meat I've had in months. Yeah. She said to finish it, didn't she, Jack? Yeah, she did. I think I'd like some of this brown crispy stuff here on the end. Hey, you suppose it'd be all right to take this bone home to my dog? Yeah, she said she never wanted to see it again. Yeah, she's cooking it for her old man, she says. He missed a real nice meal. <laughs> meal. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a lot of fellas. Take it easy. <laughs> um, you got any leads on this case yet, Chuck? Not a lot. No one's found the weapon. Well, Doc says it's probably some sort of club. Yeah, like uh, a shalala. Well, something heavy anyway. It must have weighed about eight or nine pounds. Well, whoever did it, they're not going to want to carry it any more than they need. Personally, I think it's here on the premises. Well, for all we know, it might be right under our very noses.
single rock to maybe find a clue and turn back each and every clock what else could i do No. 